In this video, I'm going to give you five ways you can improve your colored pencil art. Coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Kelly. I do product reviews, tutorials, and tips for creative moms. And in this video, I'm going to give you five ways you can improve your colored pencil pieces. While I am talking about that, we are going to be making this. So if art videos make you smile, consider subscribing. I upload new videos every weekend. Let's go. Okay guys, let's jump right in here. Let's start with tip number one, obviously. And that, my friends, is to have an accurate and light sketch. So even if you're not working in realism, you are going to want to have your sketch laid out exactly the way you want it because once you start working in colored pencil, it is very hard to erase and fix mistakes. So even if you're not working in realism, make sure you have your drawing and your sketch exactly the way you want it. And then like I just did a minute ago, I like to take a kneaded eraser and lighten my sketch up so you don't see it through the colored pencil work. Okay, and tip number two is to make sure that you're using the right paper for the techniques that you're doing. For example, I am using solvent, so I am using hot pressed 140 pound watercolor paper. I started using Fabriano Artistico, but they have since changed their secret paper formula, so I am moving on to other hot press watercolor papers. I've tried a few. I'm going to um, do some reviews on those for you guys, but make sure that you're using the right paper for the technique that you're using. Um, so for solvent, I do recommend hot pressed watercolor paper. If you are going to be burnishing, um, Bristol vellum is fine. And then the Strathmore toned, toned papers are really, really nice to work on as well. And they actually take solvent pretty well. So that is tip number two. Make sure you're using the right paper. Okay, moving right along here, tip number three is to make sure that your pencils are sharp, especially if you're using the layering and solvent method. You need to make sure your pencil is sharp so you can get into all the little dips of the paper. Otherwise, it's just, it's going to go right on top and you're going to keep missing it and you're going to have white spots in your work when you use solvent, if you use solvent. Okay, and tip number four. Tip number four is something that actually made me want to get back into art. Tip number four is trying solvent with colored pencils. I used to despise colored pencils because they always looked like crayons and I never ever ever knew what was going on with them and then I found these tips from great other art YouTubers, and I will leave them linked in the video description below, all my favorites. Um, I'm just gonna list them really right here really quick. The um, fabulous Lisa Clow from La Cree Fine Art, and Kirsty Partridge Art are my favorite colored pencil tip people, so I will leave those in the video description below. And also, another place to get really great tips is the Colored Pencil Podcast, so I will leave that in the video description below. But yeah, try a solvent. Solvents are amazing. I, like I said, I used to despise colored pencils. I hated them until I decided to try the solvent and oh my God, it is, it's like a life art changing experience. So I highly recommend you give solvent a try if you haven't already. It can make your colored pencil experience very much enjoyable. And last, but most certainly not least, tip number five. Tip number five is just to slow down. Art is supposed to be fun and enjoyable and not stressful, so I highly recommend if you're working in colored pencil, slow down, accept the fact that this is a very, 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 very slow medium to complete a whole piece in unless you have a bazillion hours in a day to where you can sit in a chair. Um, a big colored pencil piece takes me at least two weeks and that's, you know, roughly working on it, probably two hours a day. I, you know, I'm a special needs mom, so I have other things going on. So colored pencil, I know is something that's just going to take me a long time to finish just because 
it's colored pencil and I like to actually sit and enjoy the process. It's actually very relaxing. Pop on a podcast or some music that you like or an audiobook and just get lost in the drawing and take the time to put the details in and just enjoy it. It's so much fun once you get the hang of it. I absolutely love colored pencil now. I think it's one of my favorite mediums to work with. Another little quick bonus tip I'm going to throw in here, um, partly because I have time and because it is the way that I started. I did not work on a large sheet of paper when I first started. I got a small pack of Fabriano Artistico 140 pound hot press watercolor paper in a 5 by 7 block. And that was way more helpful to me, I guess you could say. It's... It, it gives you the satisfaction of finishing a piece in colored pencil and it also gives you a really good idea of how long colored pencil takes to, to work with, like how long a piece will take you. So I highly recommend you, you start small, start very, very small if you have never worked in colored pencil before. That is a great and the most helpful tip for me and it actually helped me want to do bigger pieces and slow down a little bit more after that. Okay, so those are my five tips plus the bonus tip about working small to start with. And now I want to talk a little bit about the piece that I'm working on. This is a Luna Moth inspired by, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Happy D Artist. I will leave a link to her channel in the video description below. And just watching her channel makes you want to paint a Luna Moth or draw a Luna Moth or just be obsessed with Luna Moths. And in all honesty, I just, I really wanted, um, a Luna Moth, a framed real Luna Moth to hang on my wall, but they were so expensive. I think they were like $75 and I just, <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to buy that. And so I was like, well, wait a minute, I have, you know, reference photos, I have colored pencil, I have paper, I'm like, I'm going to try to make a realistic looking Luna Moth that I can hang on my wall and pretend is a real one. <laughs> so <laughs> that is the whole point of this piece. And I actually really had a lot of fun. Um, there is a few variations of the species of Luna Moss and I just I found a bunch of reference photos for the shapes and a lot of them were from Pixabay and um, I just some of them like you could tell like when they were turned like almost um, hieroglyphic or you know those little little cards that you turn and they like move and it's holographic I don't know I'll look up the word and put it on the screen somewhere but like in certain angles the pink areas that I have on the wings and whatever sometimes they were grayish and sometimes they looked purple so I just I really wanted to pull out the purples and the pinks and I really liked how that looked so I just decided to do it that way and um, yeah I'm really happy with how this came out you guys um, I think it's gonna look fabulous on my wall. These things are just so gorgeous in real life. If you've never seen a picture of a Luna Moth or like a video of a Luna Moth, oh my God, they are absolutely gorgeous. And now I'm, I just wanna draw all the butterflies and all the moths and just hang them on my wall and just really kind of explore. It was a lot of cool to see the anatomy of this guy and a lot of it, he was actually really fluffy in a lot of places so it was actually well it might be a girl I don't know but anyway so um I really liked the coloring of him and I just I loved the variations in the greens and I must have had a whole handful of greens and this one was just so enjoyable to do and I think it was partly because I kind of did it for myself instead of just making a piece to make a piece like this one I actually had a plan I wanted to put it on my wall in my office and just go with it so I was really excited about that and just so you guys know I am working on what am I working on I'm working on the Stonehenge hot pressed 140 pound watercolor paper and I am using the layering and um, solvent techniques so that's why I keep going over certain areas and when you see a paintbrush there is solvent on that paintbrush and then I went ahead and as I started finishing up 
the details and the um, the darker blues and stuff, I pulled out some of my Derwent drawing pencils. And if you guys haven't tried those yet, I did a review on them. I'll put a card pop up here so you can check that out. Those pencils are so amazing. The Derwent Chinese White is just gorgeous and I used it on a lot of the soft to make the, the texture seem a little softer. And then uh, right now I'm using the Prismacolor Pol Col Col Erase <laughs> Black Pencil and just to kind of create shadows to make it kind of look like it's really in a shadow box. And then right now I'm going to go ahead and use the Touch Up Texture and Titanium White from BrushGenPencil.com. I will leave a link to this in the video description below. And I also did a video on how to use this product. I will put a link in the cards above so you can check that out if you need a more in-depth review and explanation on that one. And I'm just mixing that up here and then I will use my, line, my liner brush and add the fine details for this. And then I'm going to grab that right now and I'm going to just kind of roll it in here. Um, Lisa Clow has got a great video on how to use a liner brush. I highly recommend you check that out. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add all the fluffy little highlights and all the fine little white details on this piece. And I'm just really thrilled with how this came out, you guys. If you guys have never tried the brush and pencil touch-up texture and titanium white, I highly recommend you try it out. It's amazing, especially it's archi archival. The only drawback is that you cannot, you can't roll up this piece when you're done. It has to stay flat. So... I'm going to go ahead and sign this now and I hope you guys enjoyed these videos and the tips and all the links will be listed in the video description below and just so you know prints of this piece prints and merch are already available for this piece on my Redbubble shop and I will leave that linked in the video description below. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and hang out with me on social media. All the links to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, they're in the description listed below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.